So you started doing intermittent fasting, but you realize that you haven't actually looked into how to break a fast. Don't worry, this video will tell you the safest and healthiest way of breaking a fast. There are many reasons why people do intermittent fasting. For general health, increased longevity, improved cognition, muscle building, fat loss, or just convenience. But no matter what your reason is, you still want to stick to a few guidelines and principles. Here's why. While fasting, your metabolism is in a distinct state, with increased growth hormone, elevated luteinizing hormone, and autophagy, the cell's digestive mechanism. While fasting, you're also in a state of ketosis, which makes your liver convert fatty acids into ketones and energy. Most importantly, your intestines and gut have adapted to the abstinence of food, thus preserving digestive processes. So to not put too much stress on your gut or to cause extra inflammation, you can't just start eating whatever. Ah, oh, I haven't eaten anything today. Burger and fries. Yeah. Research has also shown that consuming high amounts of carbohydrates may cause an abrupt weight gain. The reason for that is sodium retention. While fasting, you excrete a lot of water and electrolytes. Refeeding on carbs causes antidiuresis of potassium and sodium. You'll get bloated, but you may also have an energy crash of insulin. Therefore, you want to slowly ease into eating the right foods at the right time when breaking your fast. It also depends on how long you've been fasting for. If you're coming off a five day fast, five days, then you need to be more patient when you would just come off from a daily 16 hour fast. Let's start off with the average situation where you've been fasting for only about 16 to 18 hours. You're about to reach the finish line and you're gonna break your fast. During your fast, you can drink non-caloric beverages like coffee, tea or water. Now that you're about to break your fast, you want to consume something that stimulates the digestive tract without releasing insulin. Apple cider vinegar is perfect for this. It balances healthy pH levels, kills off bad bacteria in your gut, stabilizes blood sugar and improves overall health. You can drink a glass of apple cider vinegar during your fast, but it's a great drink to break your fast with as well. I drink apple cider vinegar before any of my meals. Two tablespoons of apple cider vinegar, one half of lemon squeezed into hot water, one pinch of cinnamon for better blood sugar stabilization, one pinch of sea salt. It's a very nice drink to have, especially after you've fasted. Alternatively, you can do this without apple cider vinegar as well, and just using hot lemon water. In any case, you want a citric acid from lemons to promote the creation of digestive enzymes in the gut before you eat. After that, you can also drink some bone broth. Bone broth is amazing and super good for you because it has a ton of electrolytes, but it's also packed with collagen. Collagen protein is what most of your body is made of. Your joints, nails, hair, skin. It helps to keep you more youthful and elastic. Drinking bone broth after your fast will also help you to absorb the other electrolytes and minerals a lot better. When you're fasting, then your gut is cleaning out the house. And now it is ready to utilize the nutrients from bone broth, as well as the food you eat afterwards. If you've been fasting for over 20 hours, then it's a very good idea to start off with some bone broth or some soup before you eat solid food. If you fasted for just about 16 hours, then it's not that important, but it's still a good idea. Bonus tip, add some cinnamon to your bone broth and it's gonna taste amazing. An alternative for bone broth is also fish broth. You cook up all the leftover bits of the fish like the head, the fins and bones so you could get all those extra omega-3 fatty acids which are tremendously good for your brain and heart health. I mean, don't just throw out these foods because they're the most nutritious parts of the animal, like the organ meats, the joints, the fish bones. There are so many unused nutrients from them, and cooking them in water will allow you to absorb them. If you don't have access to bone broth, but you still want to give yourself some energy without crashing, then you can also consume some MCT oil. MCTs get converted into energy faster because the fatty acids in it bypass the liver and go straight to the bloodstream. This is useful because you'll be also prolonging the effects of fasting while staying in ketosis. Oh yeah! After you drank your lemon water and maybe bone broth, then you will want to wait for about 15 to 30 minutes so that your gut can absorb these nutrients. You might feel like your bowels get to move and your intestines start to wake up, which is a good thing. As we know, immediately starting to eat carbohydrates may cause you to hold on to excess water weight, especially if you're consuming them with a lot of sodium. A spike of insulin will help you to shuttle nutrients into your cells, but also has some negative side effects such as sleepiness and drought. That's why I recommend your first meal to be small and low glycemic, no matter what diet you're on. This will keep you in a semi-fasted state because your blood sugar levels don't get fluctuated. You don't have to worry about muscle loss either because ketones are protein sparing. 
Fasting already puts you into mild ketosis, but if you consume some MCTs or bone broth, then you're not going to cannibalize your own body because you have access to ketones. Here are some example first meals. 2-3 to three eggs, half an avocado, some nuts and spinach, 1 can of sardines with some salad and olive oil. I wouldn't recommend you break your fast with red meat because it's more difficult to digest than eggs or fish. Meat products should be eaten as your second meal. Okay, let's talk about fruit. Fruit is made of fructose, which is sugar that can be metabolized only by the liver. It can't be used to replenish muscle glycogen. Your liver can store 100 to 150 grams of glycogen, which gets depleted quite quickly during a 24 hour fast. So the best time to consume fruit is when your liver glycogen stores are empty, when you're fasting or when you're exercising. Because if your liver is already full and you're eating fruit, then that fructose will be stored as fat and you may even potentially get fatty liver disease. But there aren't many benefits to fruit in general. If your liver glycogen stores get depleted, then you'll start producing ketones. And you don't need to replenish your stores with fructose. You'll be actually better off by staying in this fat burning state, rather than breaking it with sugar that you don't really need. If you do choose to consume fruit, then still make it low glycemic and opt for fruit with more fiber like apples, berries or pears. The first meal should be still relatively small. In total, it should be around 500 calories or so. Unless you've come straight from a workout. If you've exercised on an empty stomach, then you'd want to consume more calories to shuttle those amino acids into your cells and promote protein synthesis. If you're on the ketogenic diet, then the best foods would be eggs because they also have a lot of leucine. Leucine is the amino acid that's responsible for muscle growth the most. If you're on a regular diet that doesn't restrict carbs, then it's actually a good idea to eat some carbohydrates because that insulin response would be used for muscle building, not getting fat. Great choices are rice cakes, a ripe banana or some potatoes. Potatoes. What you eat after your first meal depends on what diet do you follow in general, but the upcoming meals should comprise the rest of your calories. You really don't need to consume any more than two to three meals per day. Even one meal a day works fine. I practice intermittent fasting because I like bigger meals and it allows me to spend less time eating during the day. That's why I also do the ketogenic diet. Constant satiety and ketosis. If you know someone who is currently fasting, then share this video with them before they break their fast, before they do anything foolish be a good friend. I have my keto programs and books but this channel also has a ton of information on both fasting and keto. But thanks for watching, click the like, subscribe, notification bell as well. My name is Seem. Oh yeah! Stay fat adapted, stay empowered. Potatoes!